Have you ever seen an aircraft carrier up close? It's an impressive sight, one that can leave you speechless even if you've only seen pictures or videos. Standing on the shore as one of these giants glides by, you can't help but feel a sense of awe at the sheer scale and presence of such a vessel. These behemoths of the sea are longer than three football fields placed end to end, that's over a thousand feet of steel and machinery, stretching across the water like a floating city. They tower over twenty stories high, rising above the waves with a commanding presence. From the dock, looking up at the hull, it's hard to believe something so massive can even move, let alone float. The flight deck? That's a sprawling four acres of steel. Imagine an entire neighborhood block, but on the open ocean bustling with activity as jets and helicopters prepare for takeoff and landing. Seeing one in person, you can't help but wonder, how does something that big even float, let alone stay upright? Next to a tugboat or a person, the scale is almost surreal. From certain angles, especially head-on, an aircraft carrier can look downright precarious. The bow cuts through the water, but the upper decks seem to loom and teeter as if defying gravity. It's all top-heavy, like a skyscraper balanced on a surfboard. The superstructure, or island, rises high above the deck, packed with radar, antennas, and control towers. Add in the weight of dozens of fighter jets, helicopters, and all the people and equipment on board, and it seems like one good wave could topple the whole thing over. The deck is a hive of activity with hundreds of crew members working in perfect coordination. But here's the thing. Looks can be deceiving. What appears to be a disaster waiting to happen is actually a triumph of human ingenuity and design. What we see as a potential disaster waiting to happen is actually a marvel of engineering. Every inch of an aircraft carrier is carefully planned and constructed, from the massive hull to the smallest bolt. Aircraft carriers are designed from the keel up to withstand incredible forces and remain stable in even the roughest seas. They have to be. These ships routinely face storms, high winds, and the unpredictable power of the ocean. These ships are symbols of national power, floating military bases tasked with projecting force around the globe. They carry the might of a nation wherever they go, serving as both deterrent and protector. There's no room for error when it comes to stability. Teams of engineers and naval architects spend years perfecting every detail to ensure these ships can handle anything the sea throws at them. So how do they do it? What secrets lie beneath the surface that keep these giants upright and steady? Let's dive in and find out how first impressions can be deceiving, and how the real story is even more fascinating. To understand how an aircraft carrier, which can weigh over 100,000 tons, manages to stay afloat on the open ocean, we need to talk about a fascinating principle in physics called buoyancy. This concept is the secret behind not just ships, but everything that floats or sinks in water. This is where the science comes in, but don't worry, we'll keep it simple and fun. Buoyancy is all about the relationship between objects and the water they're in. It's a force that acts in the opposite direction of gravity, and it's what makes floating possible. Think about what happens when you drop something in water. Some things, like a rock, immediately sink to the bottom. That's because the rock is heavy for its size and the water can't hold it up. Others float, like a rubber ducky or a piece of wood. These objects seem to defy gravity, bobbing happily on the surface. It all comes down to density. Density is basically how tightly packed the matter in an object is. If you have two objects of the same size, the one that weighs more is denser. A rock is very dense. Its molecules are packed closely together, making it heavy for its size. A rubber ducky, on the other hand, is much less dense. It's mostly air and light plastic, so it weighs very little for its size. Water has its own density, too. It's the standard we use to compare whether things will float or sink. Objects less dense than water float, that's why a wooden log or a plastic bottle will stay on the surface. Objects denser than water sink. Pretty straightforward, right? If something is heavier for its size than water, down it goes. Now you might be thinking, hold on Mike, aircraft carriers are made of metal, and we all know that metal sinks. And you're right, it does. But here's the catch. It's not just about what something is made of, it's also about its shape and how much water it can push aside. Think about a solid metal ball, drop it in water and it goes straight to the bottom because it's small and dense. Now imagine you could take that same metal ball and hammer it out into a thin wide sheet, shaping it like a giant bowl or a boat. Suddenly, it floats. That bowl would still be made of the same amount of metal, but it would displace or push aside a lot more water. That's the key. Displacement. The more water an object pushes aside, the greater the upward force it experiences. An object submerged in water experiences an upward force called buoyant force. 
This force acts against gravity and tries to lift the object up. This force is equal to the weight of the water the object displaces. So if your object pushes aside a lot of water, it gets a big boost from the buoyant force. If the buoyant force is greater than the object's weight, it floats. If not, it sinks. That's why a massive aircraft carrier with its hollow hull and wide shape can float effortlessly, while a small chunk of metal sinks like a stone. It's all about using science and a little clever engineering to work with the forces of nature. Okay, so we've established that aircraft carriers float because of their clever design and the magic of buoyancy. But have you ever wondered why these massive ships, which can weigh over 100,000 tons and carry dozens of aircraft, don't just tip over the moment a big wave hits them? It's not just luck or brute force. It's a fascinating combination of physics and engineering that keeps them steady, even in the roughest seas. But floating is only half the battle. They also have to stay upright. Imagine a ship as tall as a 20-story building, with thousands of people and tons of equipment on board. If the balance isn't just right, even a small shift could spell disaster. So, how do engineers make sure these giants don't topple over? This is where things get a little trickier, but stick with me. The secret lies in understanding how weight and forces interact inside the ship, and how the ship interacts with the water beneath it. Let's break it down, step by step. Every object has a center of gravity. This is the point where the object's weight is evenly distributed in all directions. You can think of it as the point where you could balance the object perfectly on your finger and it wouldn't tip to either side. For a ship, finding and controlling this point is absolutely crucial. For a symmetrical object like a ball, it's right in the center. No matter how you turn it, the weight is always balanced around that central point. For something more complex, like an aircraft carrier, it's a bit more complicated to calculate, but it's still there. The center of gravity depends on everything inside the ship. Fuel, aircraft, crew, even the food in the kitchens. Engineers carefully plan where heavy equipment is placed to keep the center of gravity as low as possible. Now, when a ship floats, it also has a center of buoyancy. This is the center of the volume of water the ship displaces. It's like the center of the hole the ship makes in the water. The center of buoyancy acts as an upward force, pushing the ship up and keeping it afloat. As long as the center of gravity is below the center of buoyancy, the ship will remain upright. This creates a natural riding force, so if the ship tilts, it wants to return to its original position. That's why ships are designed with heavy machinery and ballast low in the hull to keep the center of gravity as low as possible. Think of it like a pendulum. When it's hanging straight down, it's stable. If you push it to the side, it wants to swing back to that stable position. The lower the weight, the more stable the pendulum and the ship becomes. But there's one more important factor, the metacenter. This is a theoretical point that's a bit harder to visualize, but it's crucial for stability. The metacenter is the point where the force of buoyancy acts when the ship tilts, and it determines how the ship responds to being pushed off balance. Basically, when a ship tilts, the center of buoyancy shifts, the metacenter is the point above which the center of gravity must lie for the ship to be stable. If the center of gravity is too high, the ship becomes top-heavy and unstable. If the center of gravity is below the metacenter, the ship will right itself when tilted. This is why ships can rock back and forth in heavy seas but still return to an upright position, even after a big wave. If it's above the metacenter, the ship will continue to tilt, potentially capsizing. That's why careful design, weight distribution, and constant monitoring are so important for keeping these floating giants safe and stable, no matter what the ocean throws at them. Sadly, history is full of examples of what happens when ships are poorly designed, overloaded, or otherwise lose their stability. These tragedies serve as stark reminders of the importance of getting it right. One of the most famous examples is the Swedish warship Vasa. Launched in 1628, the Vasa was a powerful and heavily armed vessel but she was also top-heavy and unstable. On her maiden voyage, a gust of wind caught her sails, and she capsized and sank just minutes after leaving port. More recently, in 2019, a cargo ship named the Golden Ray capsized off the coast of Georgia. The ship was carrying thousands of cars and was improperly loaded, with too much weight high up. This raised the center of gravity, making the ship unstable. When the ship turned, it rolled over and capsized. These incidents and many others like them highlight the delicate balance that must be maintained to keep a ship afloat and upright. It's a lesson that naval architects and shipbuilders take very seriously, 
especially when it comes to something as important as an aircraft carrier.